Are you thirsty? I am thirsty, it's very hot. It's pretty dry. It is. Yeah, because I can see that the bank is there. Well, we are on a Roman bridge, actually. <laughs> We're on a mini Ponte della Maddalena, or Ponte Diavolo, which is our bridge. Yeah. A bit bigger. Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is a Piazza Talk a channel about our life in Lucca and in the Tuscan Hills. Please hit the subscribe button. Grazie. Ciao a tutti. It is still uh, very hot. There's no sign of uh, the temperature going down. And uh, uh, I don't think we need something light to eat, something that is uh, refreshing. So I thought that the best thing to do is to get uh, a proper traditional uh, bruschetta. How do I say? It is the most mispronounced word by foreigners, I think, in the Italian language when it comes to things to eat. We call it bruschetta. And not bruschetta. Mm, this is really dreadful. And I hear this word, something, she feels feel a cringe in my spine. I mean, it's I, not that it's the ch which is hard in italian bruschetta macchia i don't pronounce that word you can say it but i call it bruschetta and you will get top marks in any restaurant or bar if you ask for a bruschetta and we noticed that as you can see on some restaurants they even write it with a k to try and make people say bruschetta and not bruschetta uh, we can also reveal some restaurants that uh, we know they have a certain level of uh, irritation when they ask <laughs> for the bruschetta in that uh, word that i will pronounce that way you can say it bruschetta no <laughs> yes yes <laughs> but i don't pronounce it anyway so but anyway so uh, to make a bruschetta we need some very simple ingredients. First of all, we need a loaf of bread and actually bake this bread. We need good uh, tomatoes, good olive oil. We need garlic, salt, and the most important thing, we need fresh basil. You can see we have a plantation here because we use basil all the time in the summer. One trick a friend uh, told me, and it's very successful, that if you buy a pot of basil from your supermarket, even better if it's organic, and divide it and plant it out, it will grow like wildflower. And it means you don't have to have, remember to put your seeds in. And now we cut the bread. Now we go to toast the bread. There are many ways to do it. We can do it on a the toaster, on a grill pan, or whatever system you have. Under the grill? Under the grill is what, the way we do it. What type of tomatoes are these? Normal tomatoes that grow in outside here. The only thing that brings sun here, so they are seriously good. But you have to use good tomatoes that uh, have got flavor. That's the most important thing. But you can use any tomatoes. Any taste. tomatoes, yes, as long as they have good flavor. I mean, sometimes we buy cherry tomatoes. We buy uh, piccadilly, they call them, kind of little plum tomatoes. They're very good. This time I got the uh, classic tomato without a name but with a lot of flavor <laughs> we also find uh, another kind of tomato called the datterino little date they are terribly terribly sweet 
I like them, but I prefer to add it. it got also a little bit of a, a sharp side on the in the taste. So I think that how do you eat chili your brusket? <laughs> What's that? Do you use a fork? Do you use a knife? How do you a eat knife it? and fork. Oh, I eat my, my hands to be honest. <laughs> it's a bit messy like that. It's not messy. If you get used to it, it's terribly. It depends if you want olive oil all over your clothes no, you or not. No, you have a plate. Okay, this is plenty. So I'm going to add now all these tomatoes in this bowl. That's it. Next thing I'm going to add olive oil. We got olive oil from my heel. Okay. Then I need salt. And this is the trick, because the salt develops all the flavor while it is uh, sitting in the olive oil. I'm now adding the basil and I have the leaves with my hands. Every professional cook says that uh, you should not never use the, the blades. I agree. And uh, the flavor, the aroma. Okay, so now I mix it and it needs to rest for a few minutes. I'm going to place the bread on this tray. Okay, and I'm going to close the bread. To keep an eye on it, they don't get burnt. Now, the important thing is that the surface has to be dry. Okay, so I'm going to turn them over, really hot. So I get another couple of minutes here. Okay, I think it's ready. Another bread is cooled down, and I'm going to rub the garlic. Now, people normally rub one side of the uh, bread and that's it. I think in my view it's not enough, so I like it very garlicky. So I just rub both sides of the biscuit and also this side here. In theory, you can rub everything around, but this is enough. So you want to rub it really so properly. If you like it less garlicky. If you like less garlicky, why this side of the you need to just do ta ta. I uh, very garlicky. So number one, number two, and though uh, a lot of garlic, raw garlic may not be good if you want to uh, get romantic on the beach, but it's very good for your health. <laughs> Well, it depends if you are with your partner. I mean, both you're both garlicky or right. all right. It's not a problem. Now you can see that you cannot do more because it's now getting soft. So that's the last one. Now next stage, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, that's plenty. And now we have the um, tomatoes there. What I do normally, I just put a, a little bit of the juice on the top here. And then the tomatoes. Like this. Okay. What do you think, Celia? Mm hmm That's delicious. It smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you can add at the end, you can add at the end a, a bit of olive oil on the top. That is. And to make it even more delicious, a tiny bit of salt. Like this. And it looks perfect.
Sure, I'll have to eat this at the table. Uh, it's a bit more difficult to eat uh, your way. Uh, my friend said, why do you always stand up and eat? Why don't you sit at the table properly? So, um, I'm not sitting at the dining table, but I am sitting at the kitchen table and I can't cut bruschetta with knife and fork and nor am I going to dribble it <laughs> all down me. So, here goes. Hopefully in a civilised fashion. Um, it's delicious. Of course, the trick is that we have such good tomatoes. So if you've got tomatoes in your garden, this is a winner. The great thing is an antipasto, isn't it? Or it's a light lunch or a light supper. And um, we have it a lot for lunch, don't we, in the summer? Yes, because we got these fantastic tomatoes there. So that's why we tomatoes literally every day, every odd day. <laughs> And you are a bit of a tomato maniac, let's be clear. Yeah, I was here. grown in tomato land. I mean, <laughs> I'm not actually very far, Naples not very far from San Marzano. It probably is half an hour by car. <laughs> it's delicious. Can we now eat yes. it all? <laughs> yes, buon appetito. <laughs> and now with something else was not really planned, but I want to share with you this different kind of uh, bruschetta, but it's not a bruschetta. When, What's it actually called? They call it pane al pomodoro, bread with uh, tomatoes. Tomato yeah. style. But I don't know. In Italian, there's not uh, a proper name. But we found, uh, discovered this recipe many years ago when we used to go to Puglia, and uh, everybody was actually engaged in doing this thing almost every day. They're wonderful tomatoes in the summer. So what you need is bread again. So let me get a, a large slice, even thick, thick slice, like this. They have this massive, um, how good, it's not a loaf of bread, what is the, it? They're uh, big rounds of bread that are absolutely sacred down there, aren't yes. they? And this brings back happy family holidays with uh, our daughter's godfather and their family. And we all used to do this, and it was a morning ritual. Yes. And practically, you could live on this down there. Yes. What you need to do is uh, get a tomato. There are tons of tomatoes. Just make an experiment, but you probably need uh, tons of bread and tomatoes. It's something that you, cook, you prepare for uh, many people. So you just rub the tomato into the bread. It's not only the liquid, you just yet need to rub it inside the bread. You do need really, really good tomatoes to do this. Yes, and I try the other side now. You need the fresh bread for that. Um, stale bread doesn't really work. In the end, I only got the skin left. Oh, happy memories. It's a bit of a long job but it is rewarding. And all of us, all the kids, everybody, everybody got involved. Yes. And, and to add to, to the end of the story, this week, one of those kids had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I get the bread here. I'm going to pour the olive oil, as usual, because we cannot leave without a view oil and we need salt so we got sea salt here and add sea salt on the top and to make it nicer we can also add some basil leaves uh, I don't remember they're putting garlic on here I didn't remember they were one day we actually we had it on a boat, a small boat, we went across to the sea to certain islands and uh, then this bread uh, materialized in all tomatoes. <laughs> I remember everybody was rubbing on the boat, <laughs> the boat was rolling, but we still kind of rubbing on these tomatoes in the, <laughs> in the bread uh. and we made lunch like that. <laughs> now Celia, you are the, the guinea pig. So? so. How is it? Does it need more salt? Uh, is it okay? It's good and what wonderful memories of 
holidays when all the kids were young and uh, welcome to the new little one. <laughs> can you have a bite? <laughs> you can. And now it's not yet finished because we have something uh, for the heat, it's hot. And what do we do when we make coffee, if there is some coffee left, we save it, we don't check it out. We make this big pots of uh, espresso, okay? And what we do, we put the, um, the coffee in a jar, in a glass, and we add sugar. We stir the sugar when it's still kind of warm, and we put it in the freezer. Now, I got it out of the freezer uh, probably half an hour ago, and what I do, I break the ice, like this, so it's got all the crystals, and uh, it becomes a granita. So, Celia, you have to test it now for us. And we're going to show you uh, or give a few suggestions of how we keep cool without yeah. air conditioning. And um, we're now back in the city, which is kind of crazy, but uh, needs must, as they say. So uh, how do you keep cool in a non-air conditioned flat in the heat? Number one for a good idea is a granita. A granita. Okay, so this is the granita. And let's do, look at the crystals. Also, if you get low blood pressure in um, the summer, um, if you have a bit of coffee, it gives you a boost. Yeah. And raises your blood pressure a bit. So, um, you feel better. So, mm. it certainly gives you a lift. You say you kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You got something cool and refreshing and you get coffee to cheer you up. Exactly. The other thing to do is to shut your shutters and when it gets very hot and there's no air circulation, shut your windows, or your curtains, and we've got two lots of shutters. It's completely dark. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really block out the heat. And so it requires a little bit of work of opening and closing shutters and windows as to where the sun is. Yes. But it keeps your building cool and we keep it pretty cool like this in this flat and we yeah. never use electric fans or anything yeah anyway the sun is turning this side now that's why we close the sun the is window. turning this side so yeah it, uh, and at night immediately the sun goes down or open it so you get as much of a through draft as you can through your home a good trick is to, to keep cool if you really have to go out in the hot moments of the day or of the day is to put your water bottle in the freezer and then it'll slowly melt during the day and you can use it as a cooler and drink it as it melts. Let's go out. Italy is in the middle of a real heat wave. It's day <laughs> after day of really hot weather and we're rather sad that we're not up our hill. Yes. Anyway, we are by a lake here but we thought we get a bit of uh, fresh air. It's not too bad in the shade. No, it's quite nice in the shade and some lovely people are enjoying our house. So that's nice, but um, it is very, very hot. The extraordinary thing is that this year we're having no dew. So usually if you wake up in the hills, there's dew, which helps keep my plants alive. But at the moment there is no dew. So dry. So um, we're all doing rain dances, but it doesn't seem to be helping very much. So now we are in Garfagnana and this is the lake of uh, Ponte Cosi. We've never been here before. Uh, there are so many places that we want to discover. Even, I mean, this area has got so much to offer that uh, probably a lifetime is not enough to discover everything we need to want to see I me. Mean. And we tend to, if we want to cool off in a river and do wild swimming, we tend to go towards our local river, the Lima, where yes. there are lots of good mo points where you can swim in splash pools. Mm. And um, there's also, of course, uh, kayaking. 
um, pack rafting, pack rafting, rafting or whatever, <laughs> and paddle boarding, and the famous Canyon Park. Um, it is very peaceful here, apart from the helicopter we had a few minutes ago on our head, but uh, it is very peaceful. And there's actually and a lovely breeze. Yeah, it's a lovely breeze and uh, we can hear the birds and uh, there are butterflies around us. And we have a Roman bridge, which is lovely. It's very beautiful here, but also it's a bit abandoned. Yeah, I think it's part of a hydroelectric scheme, this uh, lake. Yeah. And there is quite a lot of wildlife on it. Um, you can't swim here, but apparently there's lots of fishing. The plant, mean? Yeah. What, how do you call it? I think they're bulrushes. Oh. But it's a lovely shady walk on a hot day. It's nice and cool here. That is nobody. The attraction of this place, it is uh, almost empty. So we should come here on a different day with picnic and uh, with a cook. Oh, you find a fountain here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you wet now? Pressure. Who's, who's complaining on this seat? <clears throat> oh, that's good. Is it cold? It is. Ah, okay. I prefer to drink this way. It reminds me my childhood. <laughs> mm. It's nice water. Like So uh, just by the lake are these little huts, this one's actually got a hole in the roof, but <laughs> which provide shelter and shade more importantly today. And there's a fountain and there's a barbecue and there's a table in the shade. What more could a girl want? Oh, this is a library here. See? Okay. Library in different languages, library for children. A little library on, on the, the lake. lake. Okay. Fonte Cosi. Lago di Gramolazzo. It's, uh, it's a bit busy the other one. It's, it's much more touristy. You can hire boats, you can go swimming here. Mm. The water is beautifully clear. Mm. But there are uh, parking restrictions. There are parking restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Speed yes. Trap. But I, don't uh, know. I prefer the other one. Uh, I prefer the, the remoteness. But if you've got kids, there are sort of. Um, Almost beaches made here, so yeah, it's yeah. quite a nice place for children. You can probably children. hire a kayak or You whatever. can hire kayaks and... Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it's pretty here, but it's kind of... Uh, but it's much hotter, the other is much shadier. Yes, mm, it's hotter here. And uh, it's very polished. Yeah. Right here. Uh, I prefer a bit of rustic nature. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm still for my Lima. Yes. Yes, we should go and swim one day in the river before it gets cold again. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, leave a like and activate the notification bell. You just need a Google account and it's free. It helps our community enormously. Thank you very much.